Now there's and there's two as as most doctrines in the Bible. There's two extremes on soul winning, and I'm sure exactly what he was saying. There's what's called easy believism, what what preachers call easy believism, where you go out on your lunch break, win ten people, Lord, and ten, and and then there's hard believism, where where the Calvinists they you just if God ever decides to save somebody, he'll go out there and drag them in. And the truth, as always, is right in the middle. And that means we are to be a witness to every creature and give them the gospel. That's right. That's right. And not just preachers. You have a responsibility as a Christian. You say, Brother Danny, I just can't do it. Yes, you can. You just won't. You make up your mind, I'm going to go witness to my neighbor. I'm going to witness to my uncle. I'm going to, you know, we see it all the time. But one of these days, you're going to get that phone call or see that wreath on the door. And they'll be gone. So you do it while you can. All right, let's take a Bible to 1 John chapter 5. Well, he's in 1 John this morning, so you go right back there tonight. And another chapter, another subject. And I'm going to give you just a little thought before we go. And we'll have a little time of fellowship. Now, 1 John chapter 5. Uh, I'll, I'm going to look at a, 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 a sort of an unusual verse of Scripture and bring you a thought on it, okay? 1 John chapter 5. And look at verse number 3. All right, 1 John chapter 5, verse number 3. For this is the love of God. Everybody always talking about God is love. God is love. God is love. Don't you believe in a loving God? Yeah, we sure do. Let me tell you what his love is. That we keep his commandments. <laughs> Amen. And, and that his commandments are not grievous. You know what the love of God is? The love of God is, is when you can keep God's commandments and love it. His commandments are not grievous. That's the title of the sermon tonight. His commandments are not grievous. A lot of people in the world tonight feel sorry for us Christians because of all the rules and that we've got to keep and us poor Christians have no freedom and we're bound up by all these laws and regulations and we can't do this and you can't do that and you can't go here and you can't go there and you can't uh, say this or say that or look at this or look at that. Oh, those poor pitiful Christians. It must be awful to live bound up by all them religious rules. Well, actually the truth is the opposite. The Bible said if you love the Lord and His love's in you, you will keep His commandments and His commandments are not grievous. And the truth is tonight that God only gives us uh, barriers to protect us from what would hurt us. That's right. Just like you would your kids. Uh, you don't you just take away something from your kids that'll hurt them. And you, you don't let them have something that's going to destroy them. And the Lord's like that. So tonight, let's look at this little truth. His commandments are not grievous. Uh, they, they, they feel sorry for us, but they just don't understand. Number one, I want to say about His commandments not grievous because they won't destroy you. Uh, the world would have you to believe that the commandments of God are, are destructive. As a matter of fact, the humanists suggest that you will be ruined for life if, if you get into this religion and start going, Oh, Lord, what happened to my, my brother? He's gone off the deep end and started going to church. Uh, there used to be a wicked show on TV. I don't think it's on no more. And the show was by an old wicked woman named Roseanne Barr. And Roseanne Barr is full of the devil. I never watched that show. I saw about 30 seconds of it and turned my stomach. And I never watched it. But in my video presentation, I had a clip of it. One of them video messages that I was preaching. And the, it's a little sitcom-like thing, I reckon. And Roseanne and her husband, I guess, was sitting in the living room. And her, and her, her teenage boy comes in and just said, uh, Guess what, Mom? I, I, have a, I have something i got to tell you. And uh, we're going tonight. And uh, one of them said, where? And uh, they, they said, you're not on drugs, are you? And uh, he said, no. Ooh, like that right there. And he said, I'm going to church. I'm going to Bible study. They went, oh, God. And just fell back. And they acted like that was the worst thing that could possibly happen to their son. He wanted to go to church. And go to Bible story. Now, let me tell you something, seeing people. That's the way Hollywood views us. That's the way they think. Of course, they're so ignorant. The only church they know is the Catholic church. And if that's all I know, I'd say the same thing. But they, they, they look at us, and, they, and you know what Roseanne said? 
She said, that sounds like something they'd say in the South. And all the audience laughed. You know what they're doing? They're laughing at us old country hicks that don't know no better. They're making fun of us, all them stupid people down in the South that still believe in the Bible and still believe in heaven. Oh my goodness, still believe in hell and Jesus is coming back and all of that. But you know what they don't understand? They don't understand the old song that says, My Jesus, I love thee. I love thee. Love thou art mine. They don't know what Jesus has done in our heart. They don't know that it is a joy for us to keep his commandments it is a privilege to serve him his commandments will not destroy you not destroy you amen ladies and gentlemen I had a scientist uh, not long ago and he said uh, they laugh at us for believing that uh, creation as we know it only began 6,000 years ago they laugh at us for believing that and uh, they 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 joke and make fun of us stupid people uh, that, that believe that and uh, uh, the one of them said, uh, how can you possibly, you believe? And one guy said uh, uh, to one of those, those preachers, one, he said, you've got to be kidding me. You cannot believe that all the dogs in the world came from two dogs. And I heard one the other day, she was making, she's an ex-recovering Christian, whatever that is. And she is saying, these ignorant people believe that Noah got millions of species on the animals on the ark. Now, somebody that dumb don't know a bunch of stuff. Number one, the Lord, he didn't take no species. He took kind. There's a difference in kind and species. Amen. Canine, like dog, coyotes, uh, uh, stuff like that, 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 are, that are dogs. He didn't take two chihuahuas and two, uh, they, were, they probably wasn't no such thing. Them things, I believe it was man-made. Uh, and and uh, he didn't take an English bulldog. Them things couldn't survive if you throw them out in the woods somewhere. And he didn't, uh, but they, they're dogs. And they said he took millions of species of, of dogs and animals into the boat. Now, any nut that says that, ask them how big the boat was. They don't know. Ask them how many kinds of animals were. They don't know that either. And so they're just running their mouth trying to intimidate you and make you think you're crazy for serving God. And he told them, he said, you think I'm crazy for believing all the dogs came from two dogs? You believe the world come from a rock. And they said, oh, no, we don't. We believe they've all, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where'd them first come from? Well, primordial soup was on that rock and they don't know where soup come from. And don't know where the rock come from. It was just there. They talk about us for believing crazy stuff. There happened to be a rock. And there happened to be primordial soup. And there happened to be a lightning bolt. Don't know where the power come. Electricity, the power from it. Or the atmosphere, the air. Or where it come from, the heaven. And it, bam, hit that soup. And some little amino acids got together. And they fell in love and got married and become an amoeba. And a little amoeba reproduced itself and turned into a tadpole. And next thing you know, a tadpole, he wiggled around there for about 80 million years. And wiggled around out there and, got, and hopped out and become a frog. And brother, that frog hopped around there for a few thousand million years and everything. And he said, man, I sure would like to have one of them coconuts. Man, them look good. And boy, he, so he growed him a tail and, and grabbed him some longer arms. And he got to work and climb up in them coconut trees. And he got bigger and bigger and bigger. And got one of them coconuts. And one day he fell out of the tree and broke his tail off. And so he, uh, and he got hurt for a little while. So he decided to get educated. And went to college and got him a degree and put him on a suit and tie. And said, I have become a... That's what they believe. That's putting it in redneck language. But that's what they believe. I'm telling you, don't you worry about believing the commandments of God. Don't you kids ever feel intimidated. Don't you feel the shame to believe the Bible when you go to school. Brother, His commandments won't hurt you. Amen. I sat beside this guy on an airplane one time. So I started trying to witness to him. Like he said, the Lord puts people in your path. You're supposed to witness to them. And uh, I started trying to witness to him. And he was a... Uh, psychologist and uh, I, I started trying to witness to him and here's what he said educated man he said basically whatever you believe is true for you is true for you and if somebody else believes something else is true then it is true for them now, I've heard people say stuff like this on the news lately and I thought listen I ain't even ever been to college and I ain't so dumb that here they say, uh, even the newscasters, catch them, listen to them. They'll say, 
Well, uh, he presented his facts, and we know they're not, all not true. Listen, facts are true, people. Well, he presented his facts. If he presented the facts, it don't matter who presented them, they're true. Right. He, his facts say this, and his facts say that. Facts don't contradict each other. Right. Opinions do. He got his opinions. But if it's a fact, it's a fact. Two plus two is four. That ain't my opinion. That's a fact. That's absolute. See, opinions like armpits. Everybody got two and they both stink. That's right. Mine, yours, and your grandma's. That's right, buddy. And every preacher's too. It's what thus saith the Lord. Let God be true and every man of what? That's right. You got it. Them commandments going to hurt you. They ain't going to hurt you. And uh, he, he basically said there's no such thing as absolute truth. That's what he said. There's no such thing that uh, people in other countries might really, really, really believe that, that a, 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 a tree is God. And for them it is God. And somebody up in, in Antarctica might believe that a, a God lives in an igloo and got sled dogs and, 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 and goes around on, on a, you know, being pulled around. And that's God. If they believe that's God, to them it is God. And if that religion helps them now. Now listen, people, it can't be that way. You can't have, a, there, there's not a bunch of truths. There is truth and there is error. Something's either true or it ain't true. It's right or it's not right. And that's what they can't stand about us because we believe in absolutes. Absolute right. Absolute wrong. There's no gray area. Two plus two is four. Four plus four is eight. No gray area. It either is or it's not. His commandments will not hurt you. And I thought, I, I've never heard. Uh, I, I, I thought, well, what kind of a nut are you, man? And you know what they teach you in college? Basically, if you go to college education, I'm not saying it's wrong. You got to try to get a good job, nothing like that. But you basically are taught that there's no such thing as absolute right and absolute wrong. And they teach you really can't know anything. You just believe this or believe that. So you don't know nothing. So you go, you go blow down $200,000 down a, a, a rat hole to, come, to find out that you really can't know nothing. <laughs> you got had, buddy. You got, you got took to the cleaners. Hey, man, I'm not going to pay somebody to teach me I can't know nothing. One guy said, you can't know anything. And a student said, are you sure about that? <laughs> he knows, he thinks he knows that. Well, maybe you can. I don't know. But see, it's crazy. It's crazy. His commandments will not destroy you. Oh, really? oh Richard Dawkins, I, he's wicked as a devil. And I wish the Lord would kill him, but I won't even get saved. I do. I want him to get saved. But he's a wicked, evil man. He's destroying the faith of millions of young people, passing his books around. And boy, he, tell, he said, religion is the virus of the mind. Boy, he said, he said, religion is a virus that will destroy your, your critical thinking and you're able to think clearly. And we know what we say. We say, professing himself to be wise, he become fool. That's what we say. Now somebody's wrong, y'all. Somebody's wrong. I trust the book here. That's been here for thousands and thousands of years before Richard Dawkins ever got off his baby formula. And I'm going to trust that book over a liar that, uh, that wants to sin and get away with it and don't want to have thanks for the God so he convinces himself there ain't no God. That's right. I'm telling you this evening, brother, his, his commandments ain't going to hurt you. His commandments, number two, they will not degrade you. Uh, the commandments will not degrade you. They say, uh, and, and you hear this a lot. Oh, you Christian people, you're degrading yourself, especially the women. They say women are held back. And women are not allowed uh, to be leaders. And uh, not this and not that. And women are oppressed. And all these women in, this, in these Christian churches, they're just looked down upon as inferior. And, uh, and if you ladies ain't careful, you'll start listening to that junk and start believing. I'm going to tell you tonight, no system of belief in the world exalts and respects womanhood more than Bible Christianity. Bible Christianity teaches a man ought to love his wife enough to die for her and give himself for her. Islam don't believe that. 
Other religions don't believe that. Go to other countries and see how they treat females. And then come tell me, All right, his commandments don't degrade you. Listen, you know what? You ladies in here tonight that are Christian ladies, you got a Christian husband. He's good to you. He'll take care of you. He'll go to work and pay the bills and make sure you're took care of and try to give you what you need if you can. And what's over you? His commandments don't degrade you. His commandments don't hurt you. His commandments don't bother you. Uh, the devil will will uh, he'll he'll make you think he'll he'll make you think that we're the crazy ones and the world's smart. Uh, years ago, a long time ago, it's a thousand times worse now. We all went over to Iceville preaching on the street, and Iceville has become the the hub of the the, the perverts uh, in the last last 20 years and it's sad I think I personally believe that the Ralph Sexton Jr. and all them guys over there and the Holy Ghost was moving and back in the 80s and 90s and the power of God was all over that place and I always used to say way back in the 80s I thought if God ever sends real revival to America it'd be it'd be uh, Ralph Sexton Jr. I used to say that all the time well he had that special touch on him and then and then Ralph and then here comes CT and them guys and had some of that same touch uh, of, of revival and uh, they and old Ralph was over there preaching. And I believe the devil moved in over there. We went over there one night and took a bunch of kids. And we was going to take guitars and sing and preach on the street. I don't know if it was anybody here with us that night, that famous night. Brandon, you that? Lorraine, did you go to that? And uh, we was over there. I'm telling you, it's Friday night. And we got down there. And we was out on the street. And we had guitars singing. And here they come. <whistles> oh, my goodness. I mean, they come out. That day, and and they, they were dressed not like people. You know, you didn't watch it was. And uh, and I don't mean that bad. Uh, and this this guy come out and he had on, he had on one of them little dresses that looked like a fairy. Really. It, it was short to right here. And it was bright green, a little skirt. A stupid looking man's legs. What in the world? It looked like a rope with a knot tied in him. And he, 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 he uh, that's what daddy always said. And he had this little fairy dress on there and makeup. And he come out and got right in front of us and started going like this, dancing. Oh, my goodness. That was a long time ago. That's 25 years ago. I thought, Lord have mercy. What in the world? And then, and we started saying, we started preaching. And, I, and this guy come up right in front of us with a big old Harley. One of them real big and loud. And he went, Wow. Wow, and just kept doing that to drown us out. And Todd, he hadn't been saved very long at that time. Uh, so Todd reaches over and hits the kill switch on that motorcycle. It just died. <laughs> that guy said, get your hands off my motorcycle. I thought, okay, come on, come on, bud. I thought, oh boy, here we go. Uh, we're going to get we're gonna get thrown in jail here tonight. I thought we were going to have it out right there. And I said, no, just leave him alone, man. Let's let it go. Let go. Let go. Everybody back out starts. We just kept saying, kept saying. And then all of a sudden, I heard somebody behind me. And these guys were talking. They said, wow, some of those Christian guys are cute. I said, let's go. <laughs> so we're dead. I said, I'm out of here, buddy. Hell or high water. I don't mind. I'm, I'm done here. That's right, we, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and you know what they thought? They thought these poor, dumb, stupid Christians. It's like kids going to school and think they're a cat. And we're against, and they think we're the crazy people. Are y'all listening? It's like, do you know what would have happened when I went to school if kids said I'm a cat at school? And I need my litter box open. I'm going to pee in the. <laughs> Do you know what? They'd, you'd have been in the nut house. They'd put you in a rubber room, brother. Now we're going to the rubber room. Because <laughs> we don't think it's. I don't mean to be ugly. I mean, I feel so. I, 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 Lord knows my heart. I, it breaks my heart. Uh, see, people like that. It, it, it's, it's rights become wrong, wrong become right. Good become evil, evil become good. We, uh, a bunch of guys down there was preaching in Myrtle Beach, and they went down there to preach on Bike Week. Now, I've never been to Myrtle Beach on Bike Week. Matter of fact, I ain't been to Myrtle Beach in, Lord, I don't know, 100 years, I guess. Uh, we used to go down there years and years and years ago, but I used to, that's the wickedest place I've ever seen, I believe, and still about feel like that. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not against the sand, the water, the waves, all of that, but Lord have mercy. If you can get down there in the middle of that atmosphere and it don't bother you, you are a backslid. And all God's people said, if that don't bother you, you're backslid. 
unless you're on a mission from God. I'm not saying it's wrong to go to the, you know, Christians go to the coast. <laughs> Sinners go to the beach. That's what, that's what the old preacher said. But I like it. I like the ocean. I like I like sand. I like the waves. I like all that stuff. And and I ain't stupid. I know we're in the world, not all the world. Get out. I get it. Get it. Uh, but there's, on bike week, it's bad. It's bad. I mean, they're riding on these big hauling, the girls hanging off the back of the, the bikes, and everybody's drunk. And these guys went down there to preach on the street. And it's out the Bible out there, and there's preaching, giving out tracts. And somebody called the cops. People out here drunk. People I've, were using the bathroom on the sidewalk. And the cops got the Christian preachers and said, Y'all are you're, you're causing a, a obstruction of sidewalk move. See that? See that? They're causing a problem over at Bell Share in Asheville. I think they finally quit it. Guys went over there and preached on the street and they threw beer on them and spit on them, on the preachers. And it never got on the news. If the preachers had thrown or spit on the, the homosexuals, it would have been all over the country. They'd have been charged with a hate crime. You know why that is? The world don't believe and understand and respect the commandments of God. His commandments don't degrade you. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in the major minority. God help you to understand His commandments won't hurt you. And all of that, His commandments won't disturb you. His commandments won't disturb you. They won't bother you. Uh, you don't uh, Listen, when a man gets to preach it like I am tonight, it won't bother you. If you love the Lord, if you love the Lord, there's something inside you. When I'm up here, it's saying, that's right, that's right, that's right. Tell it, Brother Daddy. I'm glad to hear somebody talk with some sense. I'm glad, and I'm, people tell me that all the time. They say, you're a voice of reason in a, in a crazy world. Preacher, thank you for saying it. That's exactly how I feel. Thank you for making sense out of it. People write on us all the time to our church, and they'll say, uh, we look to you, Brother Danny, for making sense out of what's going on. And that's what the Bible does. Plain Bible preaching doctrine makes sense of what we're seeing in the world. His commandments won't disturb you. His commandments won't uh, uh, degrade you. His commandments won't destroy you. If a man preaches on hell, it won't. you won't rise up and say, that's awful. You're mean. You're all, you'll, you'll get a broken heart and have a burden for souls and say, God, make me a soul winner. God, make me a witness. God, help me. Because it's in the Bible and it won't disturb you. If a man gets up and preaches on hell, and you get mad, Mark, yeah, there's something wrong with your heart. Not his. Not his. If the commandments are not grievous, they won't disturb you. Finally, and I'm done, his commandments won't depress you. Amen? You ain't going to make you depressed. You say, oh, I'm just trying to live right. I can lay around the house and then we'll commit suicide. That, that ain't, you don't, that ain't, you know, that, his commandments don't make you like that. I've heard people say, well, you see high them people in Broughton over there, the Bible running them people crazy, and that, that, turned, that made them go crazy, and they're in the nut house now. No, the Bible, the Bible don't make people crazy. I'll tell you what makes you crazy is trying to hold on to the Bible and get drunk and commit adultery and everything both together at the same time. Now, that will put you in the nut house, but it ain't God's fault, and it ain't the Bible's fault. Amen? Trying to live on, have one foot in heaven other than hell will make you crazy. But the Bible will not make you crazy. The Bible is not depressing. Amen. The Bible will not depress you. It will make you. It will not. Uh, the Hollywood picture of Christians is uh, a crazy preacher that rules with an iron fist and keeps Jack Daniels under the pulpit, takes a swig of it after everybody's gone out of the tent, and goes home and slaps his wife. Girlfriend on the side. That's the Bible picture of real Christianity. Nothing could be further from the truth. Nothing. And there are some crooked preachers. The crooked preachers are like falling stars. You ever been walking out at night? And somebody says, Look, look. And you saw a falling star. And everybody goes, Whoa, did you see that? That's the way preachers are. There's 10 million still standing there shining. And that's the way preachers are, people. For every one that goes down, that God's got 10,000 up there that's still shining, doing their job, doing right, and being a blessing. His commandments won't depress you. Everybody <laughs> gets religion now. 
Uh, people are on antidepressants. Uh, I'm being ugly. If you've got to have some kind of medicine for a medical condition, it's when you and God and your doctor. But I'm telling you, if you get your heart right with the Lord, the joy of the Lord bubble up in your soul. The last thing in the world you'll ever do is be depressed. The Bible said the joy of the Lord. You really believe the Bible? You believe you're going to heaven? You believe you got a mansion? You believe you're going to miss hell? You believe God ain't your prayer? The last thing you ever be is depressed. You say, well, I just ain't depressed all the time. It's because you let your mind dwell on the wrong things. Now, if you've got a physical condition or chemical imbalance, well, I ain't a doctor. I just, I'm just i a Bible preacher. And that book says, great peace have they that love thy law. That book said, the joy of the Lord is our strength. That book said, he gives peace to those uh, that trust in him. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thy own understanding in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. The Lord will make good on his promises. His commandments are grievous. Now tonight, I don't know where you stand with the Lord this evening. I don't. I know, I think I know everybody in here. Just met these folks, but I think I know everybody else in here. As far as I know, everybody in here professes to be saved. But maybe you're struggling with something and the devil's trying to tell you, Kip, not the Lord, God's being kind of mean to you, ain't he? Ain't God being kind of mean to you? Why can't you do this? Why won't he just let you do that? God loves you, but now you can't do what you really think you want to do or you, you think, I, I can't help it. This is just me. You know, I can't help how I am. Now, the devil has shot you a curve, buddy. He shot you a curve. First of all, you can help it. Serial killers grow up and say, I just can't help it. I just got this urge to kill people. Well, yeah, you can get rid of that urge. Amen? Right. The commandments of the Lord will not hurt you. If I was you here tonight and, and I was struggling with something, I would get in this altar and I wouldn't argue with God saying, God, why'd you put that in the Bible? I can't have no, I'm miserable, Lord, trying to live like that. That, that ain't the purpose of God's commandment. You get in that altar and say, God, I know you know what's right. I don't have enough sense to know what's right. And by your grace, I'm going to do what you want me to do. I don't care if I'm happy or not, Lord. He's not interested in you being happy. He's interested in you being holy. He wants you to be holy first. Then you get to be happy later. You know, the biggest thing in the world ain't you being happy. That's what people tell me. People say, well, the main thing is that you're happy. Well, that's the devil talking right there. Yeah, you know, the main thing ain't you being happy. Some people are being happy shooting people. Uh, some people will be happy uh, snorting crack, brother. Uh, that don't mean nothing. Uh, the main thing in the world ain't you being happy. The whole world ain't here to serve you. I tell you, it ain't all about you. The main thing is for you to be right. You cut this all. I tell you, I'd be happy. You hit this all and say, God, if I ain't never happy a day in my life, I'm going to serve you if it kills me. And then you'll be riding down the road one time and happiness will just get in with you. And you say, Glory to God, it's good to be saved. See? But if your goal is chasing happiness, you'll never find it. That ain't, that ain't the way it works. His commandments. Are not grievous. The Lord ain't trying to hurt you. I've heard people say, well, why does God make it so hard? We have to wait till we get married and have sex. And we can't do that. Why does he make it so hard? No, he's doing that for your good. You know what happens when people get together and come in? They have babies. And then babies ain't got no mom and daddy and no home to grow. That's why God ordained the home. Husband, wife, children, home. So then babies will take care of. You have a bunch of babies that nobody can take care of. It ain't me, no God. It's me, no us. That won't submit to it. Because his commandments are not grievous. I stand by our heads in prayer. Amen. We're going to sing something here tonight. Come on, Brandon. And we'll sing something here this evening. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Maybe I need to say, Lord, I ain't come to all her. People think terrible about me. It don't matter. It don't matter. It don't matter. Every one of us ought to be an altar. Uh, don't, you, ain't, you ain't fooling nobody. Let's all get in here tonight and pray. And let's say, Lord. It ain't, I don't want to submit to my husband, Lord, but my command, your commandments ain't grievous. They ain't going to kill me. I'm going to start doing it. I'm, I don't want to love my wife, Lord. Well, his commandments ain't going to kill you. Do what he said, buddy. I don't want to submit to my parents. Well, do it anyway. Do what God said. His commandments will not hurt you. Father, do what ought to be done here tonight. Get glory and honor to yourself and help us to live by your word and trust you with all our heart. In Jesus' name.
Amen. Let's sing about it. Amen. Amen. Come on. Let's get in here and pray tonight. If you want to come and pray, you come on right now. Join these on the altar. Maybe just between you and the Lord. Just between you and the Lord. God dealing with your heart about something. And you say, Lord, instead of being an old, mean, rebellious, hateful wife, I'm going to love my husband and, and teach my kids to the right way to go. Instead of being an old selfish man, I'm going to love my wife and do what's right. Amen. Come on. Come on right now. Sing by that thy blood. Come on. Wash it for me. Amen. I'm going to obey my parents. I'm going to obey the Lord. Come to thee. Sing it now. I come. Sing now. Just as I am and waiting. Let's go. Let's go. Read my soul of one dark blood to thee whose blood can cleanse. But, oh, and Amen. of God, God I come. Say it now. I one more verse. Sing one more. Hit man. One more. Everybody. Just as, as I am. Amen. Amen. Wilt welcome heart and cleanse relief. Amen. His commandments are not grievous. I believe, O Lamb of God, I come. I come. Let's play himself in tonight. God still speaking to hearts. Don't leave tonight. There's something between you and the Lord. We tried it both ways. You tried it doing your way, look what happened. You're better off to submit to Him. He, don't, he ain't going to hurt you. His commandments ain't going to hurt you. He's not gonna, his, his goal is not to make you miserable. That's not it. People think God's up there trying to figure out more rules to make, to make us be a miserable person or send us to hell. That's not the God of the Bible. The God of the Bible loved the world and gave His Son for the world and gives us guidelines for our own protection and good. He don't get some kind of sadistic joy out of torturing people and making their life miserable. You get, the devil's told you that. Amen. God's good. God's good. The greatest life you'll ever have serving God. He's been good to me, buddy. Good to me. Amen. All right. All right. All hearts clear. Amen. We're going to, we're going to, uh, uh, let's, let's, uh, Let's give this brother some gas money, a fellow. Get them off the plates and let's, let's help him out a little bit here tonight. And uh, whatever you give, we'll, we'll go to them. They're going in full-time ministry and, and it seems like a very worthy